Da waren die bis zum Ende, weil ich kenne sie. Ja. Ich will den letzten Crip Kram reingeben. Ja. Oh. Oh, der ist dickes. Hm? Der ist dickes Sauna. Ja. Was dick ist? Ja, ich habe ja hier die äh, Wagrand Boxes und die den Wagrand Krempel noch draufgepackt. Ja, aber das ist wirklich very slow. Yeah. Oh, no. I think we want to wait some minutes more because it seems like uh, many people are trying to get tickets for the party tonight. Oh, there is. Right. Oh, yeah, that's very good. Ja, ich habe hier auch, ich krieg hier Wasser. Willst du noch eins haben, oder was? Ich will noch ein bisschen. Er will noch ein Very few people. Well, no, nobody they wants to back up his days. I don't think so, but the thing is that they just started to, uh, you know, there are some free tickets for the fountain yeah. cup, right? So I believe that almost all people are there. And we can make the I, I will, after one, one hour, don't take it personally. <laughs> I, I'm just switching after one hour to another another workshop, so... <laughs> no problem. <laughs> I'm Uh, yes, yes. What is, does, it, does it have any special call point? Well, I don't think so. That should be for the okay.
question. So guys, sorry for the delay. Uh, maybe I'm going to wait a bit, a, a couple of minutes to speak to anyone else. It seems like the the many people are trying to get a ticket for the party. <laughs> so, do you want to try out something with Boreos? Uh, no, I'm just interested in Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> do you already know? Uh, in fact, no. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I read in the description in some successful uh, or work of uh, Bakula, yes. and I know Bakula more or less just by name, and I read some basic info about, about that, but uh, in fact I don't have a uh, use case for, for this backup tool mm -hmm. as far as I know, as uh, our my production servers are, uh, are based up with create our uh, tape beep, uh, solution mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I expect it to be used uh, not only for the backup of uh, uh, Linux station but also for Windows yes and I consider using maybe this for my home network with home computers yeah that's a good that's a good starting point to some NAS solution or mm -hmm. something like that maybe to get some experience with it yeah did you already hear about no, 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 just oh. uh, I'm interested in it okay do you already know Barrios? No? Okay. just curious Let's wait for more minutes.
Yeah, I think we we start now. Oh. Yeah. You don't mind yeah. So yeah, hello everyone. Let me introduce you our next speaker. As you can see, uh, I can screen fine. Sorry about Stefan Dor, co-founder of the Barrels. If you know that it's a backup solution, and he will tell us something about plugins. I mean, more specifically, Python plugins for that. And I'm looking forward that we will show us something about that. So. Yeah, then let's start. Um, yeah, my name is Stefan Dürr. I'm a co-founder. We also have a founded a company for um, developing Barrios. Uh, it's a fork of Bagula version 5. Developed since three years. Yeah, yeah. Three yeah. years. Actually, it's the fourth yeah. year. Um, yeah, so it's a backup tool. Um, Okay, so agenda, um, I will give you a short introduction about the architecture and terminology. Um, then um, the, a short introduction, overview over the different types of plugins we have here, some example also we shown, and as the, the file daemon plugins are the I think the most useful, um, we will look into more detail in the file daemon plugins. I'll show some examples there. Um, I think I won't cover much this, uh, the director API does not have nothing to, uh, much to do with uh, plugins for backup purposes, but it's more an interesting extension what else can be done with Python and Barrios, but I think we won't cover that here. Um, yeah, it is actually possible if you want to try out some things, but it doesn't really matter. It's everything online, so anybody who wants to, to try it out later, no problem. So, okay, basically we have three components in Barrios. There is the so-called director, which is coordinating all the all the stuff that uh, must be done for backup. It uses a database as a catalog, so-called catalog. It's a PostgreSQL or MySQL database. SQLite for small test uh, installations is also usable, but not um, recommended for production use. Um, then there is the storage daemon, which is um, responsible for actually saving the data that has, is being backed up to uh, different types of media, um, backup to disk for sure. I don't know why we have a USB stick there, <laughs> it makes not much sense, um, and for sure uh, tape and uh, media changers are supported. And the uh, so-called file daemon, which is classically called the backup agent um, in other backup software products, um, which um, actually accesses the files that are being backed up. And we have um, packages for um, all common Linux distributions available, and there is also a file daemon for Windows. So also, the system can be used to back up Windows systems. Um, a relatively new thing is uh, a web UI, web interface, which can show all the status of backup jobs and statistics, and recently it has also been added a nice a tree dialog for selecting files for restores. So for, uh, well it's this, say it's two servers here, but uh, for 
for smaller setups, um, both director and storage daemon uh, are usually run on the same machine. Uh, if there are any questions, uh, you can ask at any time. Maybe yeah. just uh, in this uh, big, uh, big uh, the previous slide deck, uh, there was a link for the, for the slides. Yeah. Ah, yeah, okay. Ah, I also have, uh, I think I have it also on all the slides. I think I only on this one. And they will be provided for, for download on DevConf uh, later on. So. Okay, so um, Barrios is, is written in C. And C++, so um, this is harder to learn, to extend it, and um, that's why we thought it's a, it's a good idea to, to be able to extend the functionality with Python because it's easy to learn and uh, many people know Python already. So, and, um, so it's not necessary to do anything in C, it's, it can all be done in um, we can um, react on, on a number of events that, uh, that for sure uh, the standard functionality also already provides pre and post scripts for backup jobs, um, but with the Python plugins we can do a lot more. Um, as for example, normally a backup, uh, in a backup job you configure a so-called file set, which defines uh, the data that's being backed up. So that's more or less uh, static in the standard configuration way, and uh, with Python plugins we can dynamically determine what, what gets backed up. And we can for sure uh, use uh, the whole uh, Python library that, that exists uh, to access and uh, get data in whatever way is necessary. So we can do uh, application specific actions for backup and restore. Yeah, already well, we said Python knowledge is widespread and lots of modules are available and we can uh, use Python plugins in the FD, which is the most important. The SD functionality of Python's, Python plugins is uh, limited. We have, uh, for example, uh, Python plugins in the storage daemon can uh, not be used to uh, store the data that's being backed up. There is another architecture for accessing um, cloud storage like uh, Ceph and Cluster and that's written in C to, to uh, because it's, it's using the native uh, libraries to access uh, um, cloud storage. Ceph, for Ceph we use librados and libgf API for storing backup data to ClusterFS. And director plugins are mostly interesting for, for uh, monitoring purposes. Class-based approach will be explained later. Um, we need at least Python version, version 2.6, which is uh, available in all common Linux distributions and um, yeah, we also, we don't uh, add our own uh, Python interpreter, it's just uh, the packages have proper dependencies and the uh, Python distribution from the Linux distribution is being used. There is, uh, as Barrios is written in C, um, one part of the plugin architecture is written in C and this code is already prepared for Python 3.x but uh, we have never, never used the Python part in Python 3 yet. So. 
Okay. Um, yeah, uh, Barrios is configured via uh, plain text configuration files. Um, so we need to pass options to the to the FD or also the other plugins via the configuration files. Then the Barrios core calls um, functions in the that are defined in the in the Python code on defined events. And uh, the other way around, um, the Python code can uh, mo modify some variables and uh, call functions in the C code that are defined in the C code. So to um, actually use these uh, two statements, in the, the configuration file for the file daemon is etc barrios barrios fd.conf. And uh, those statements are commented in the in the default installation. So to use Python plugins, those must be enabled. So this is an example what uh, how a director plugin can be used uh, for monitoring purposes by sending data to Nagios or Isinga. So you can finally have some nice graphs. This is how it is configured in the in the director for a director plugin case. I don't think we need to look into detail here. And those are some variables that uh, this, this shows how variables can be retrieved from the director. Okay, so um, I have also added some information on uh, how to get Barrios up and running. Uh, basically, it's it's not very difficult. You just need to add the um, repository. Um, um, we have the packages on the USB stick provided. Um, the normal way is to use the download repository at the repo file. Uh, for a basic installation, it's only two megabytes of packages, but I have also prepared a, a vagrant file. This is also on the USB stick. So what must be done to install and set up Barrios? It's, uh, yeah, we must install the packages. As we have different database backups, we must install a package with, which has the dependencies for PostgreSQL. Uh, as it is possible to run the PostgreSQL server on a different machine, we don't have a dependency on PostgreSQL server. That wouldn't make much sense, so it must be installed separately. In this is how to set up the uh, PostgreSQL database. And finally, there must be the, the tables must be created in PostgreSQL. So this is done by some scripts that are provided with the Barrios packages. Can I have a question? Yeah. Uh, what's the main difference between Barrios and Okula? Uh, oh, we. <laughs> There are, there are, we have done a lot of work, uh, starting with uh, code cleanups. Uh, we've added uh, new features like uh, copy jobs from SD to SD if you have multiple sites, for example. We have added the uh, web UI, which we started from scratch. Um, Daniel, what else? The biggest have we difference added? between um, Barrios and Bacula so far is um, that there is only one code base. So Barrios is at every time open source. So the whole project is published in GitHub. We packaged yep. also um, our we have packages also in the community repository. But we also provide uh, to make it more enterprise ready as it, uh, it is by itself. 
Um, we also have the value of subscription support packages in XL repositories, but every every single line of code is open source. It's so always on for, GitHub. For example, yeah. also the founder development. So we have also people who uh, founded some new features, and they must keep in mind that they founded the feature, of course, but it's they founded it for everyone. So that's also a big difference. So and there is actually. Um, um, community project driven development without any external money so we don't have to hesitate so we um, we can do it in the right way for the users and as we believe and the um, op the various version as it is now has a lot of more features than the actually the actually Bacala uh, community version uh, which is actually set and so if you compare them, so you see there are some features in Bacala 7 also than they are in ba uh, Barreos, but they uh, reprogram them. So uh, right after we, right after the fork, um, they, they, they push the community edition for a one time period, bringing, um, they bring in some features we also have, but instead of using our code, they recode it, so they, they reprogram it, yeah. and then they pushed out the seven version, and that's two years to go. And now, and I mean, that's our some, that's our the, the, the biggest differences. The, too. the problem is that for sure, in the ideal world, I would say, don't don't fork, collaborate, mm -hmm. but that didn't work out. We've tried that uh, five years ago, and. Uh, yeah. That finally led to and the decision uh, to. Uh, right now, I uh, have Bakula mm -hmm. running, backupping my my notes. Uh, can I just take Bear OS and no replace problem. Bakula? The yes, it, there is, is uh, this upgrading is. Uh, I mean, uh, config files and so on. It's mostly we have added for sure more uh, configuration and options, but the file daemon. Uh, I can you can still use the Bakula file daemon. We have also a flag named compatible equals yes or no. So there are for sure features added in Barreos which require the file daemon also and to be. Uh, will Barreos uh, understand uh, my catalog from Bacula 7? It must be migrated. You, you, you must uh, run some mi migration scripts. Yeah, you yes. must run a migration script which um, um, modifies the uh, d uh, table structures to be. And uh, with both storage daemon and volumes. Uh, can there was read? No, I so don't think so. You can use the FD from Bacula mm -hmm. with um, Miss Barrios. So actually, it's um, supported up and down. Right? So, but you can't mix directory and storage demons. So oh, if well. you run a Barrios directory, you need I'm to run a Barrios storage demon. But yeah, the volumes, can, me, the volumes the can be read by the barrier storage team oh. and they can access and the director can handle them. Yes. So um, there's no problem. So you have the database, you need to migrate your database. And that's in, and and it's three, and it's three, a three yes. simple ways you have to do so you, If you look in the migrate script, and um, so it's interoperable. You can do it. Okay. The director and the storage team must be the same version for yeah. sure. But the FD um, for example, should if work. You are if you are in the hurry to back up in Windows NT or whatever, then you need a Bacula 2 point client because that's the um, that's so far the only version which works on, for example, Windows NT. I think with 7 they have uh, published some new uh, Windows. Windows, but Windows NT. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> I'm talking about Windows NT, that's the worst case I have not. So. And then I have to find out which version fits for Windows NT or not. Okay. Yeah, after after uh, sitting up, we can uh, run a, a first uh, backup job uh, to to control. Um, you use the B console. You will already know B console, and to run a job, there is a pre-configured uh, job in the default configuration which backs up the machine itself. So to run it, the command is run and job name and finally we get uh, the messages I have here you can see we have never backed up uh, uh, never run a backup with this and the default 
is uh, incremented back up, but uh, for sure it notes, oh, we have no prior full backup, so it automatically switches to, to full backup. Um, yeah, so this is again um, how to enable um, Python plugins in the file daemon. And for sure after changing this we must restart the file daemon. So the parameter plugin names, there are also plugins written in C, like uh, don't may you may know the so-called ePipe plugin. Um, that is named bpipe minus fe.so. Um, so if uh, plugin names is omitted, um, the um, file daemon tries to load all plugins named uh, asterisk dash fd.so. If we say only Python, then it only loads Python fd.so. So as we can uh, in the configuration, we configure which plugin actually gets used uh, in a backup job. So multiple plugins are, are possible for different jobs. Um, the parameters uh, module path and module names are mandatory, otherwise it won't work at all. And all the other parameters are custom parameters that's up to the Python code of the plugin to handle them. Um, yeah, actually this whole string is passed to the Python method pass plugin definition. And yeah, actually there are two types of uh, FD plugins, command plugins and option plugins, the difference will be explained later in the slide. So this is a, a complete example of uh, how to use, uh, how to configure uh, the FD plugins. We have uh, the package comes with a, a example plugin, which is more or less uh, um, that's what the normal file daemon uh, in C only does, but it's a, it's a good example to study how, uh, how, how Python FD plugins actually work. So as with uh, a normal backup job, we, we have to configure a file set and a job. The job refers to the, to the file set and also takes other definitions from the default job definition. Um, yeah, a file set must be given a name and um, this is a, this is a command plugin, so the plugin string must be defined in the include section. And these are other options that uh, can be configured for backup job. And the job yeah, refers to the file set, and um, that's it mostly. So, running a job with, which uses a um, plugin is the same as uh, normal jobs. So, this output here is. This output actually is generated by the Python plugin code. And uh, finally, in the end, we can look which files were actually backed up with this job S. Here it set us it's the job ID 2, and so we can look which files, when it terminated, have actually been, been backed up. This is how to run a restore. So you just in the console enter restore, then there is a, a menu with many different options 
The most common one is the menu point five to use the most recent backup for a client. And we have to select the, the file set because for this client I previously ran the normal backup client. You have a question? Uh, yeah, uh, uh, the restore operation, uh, how it deals with uh, permissions, uh, time, and, and these, these properties yeah. of files? Um, yeah, uh, when talking about Python plugins, the, the plugin um, must uh, actually pass uh, the set the, the permissions and the, mm -hmm. and the um, owner, and so owner and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, the normal uh, uh, direct uh, file daemon functionality automatically uh, saves and restores ownerships and permissions mm -hmm. and it's also possible to uh, store extended attributes. Mm -hmm. So here we select the file set and then the uh, then it uh, gets from the database which uh, which files are available in this uh, backup and um, then it gets to a menu where it is possible to to uh, browse the the tree which uh, of the files which are backup. I can also use cd and ls and mark the files which I want to restore with the mark. In this case, I just use mark asterisk, so ev everything which was backed up uh, will be will be restored. It shows me the, actually the, the storage daemon uh, just writes to, to files. So it here shows me which uh, media are uh, being used for this uh, restore. And yeah, this is how the, yeah, that's then a final uh, summary is uh, printed out. It's it's possible to modify parameters. If I would have say mod, I could have modified some of those parameters. And then finally, the restore process is being run. So. Yeah, okay, no problem. Yeah. To what? To, to start, start the job. Yeah, yeah that's uh, that would be possible with the uh, director API actually in Python. The the um, director API uh, there's a, uh, a package called Python Barrios, which can be used to uh, control. Uh, it it makes a TCP connection to the to the director, and uh, then you can script arbitrary stuff that. You would normally use interactively in B console. So, <coughs> it runs between plugins and before after scripts. Yeah, the pi the the plugins can do can do actually more than just a pre and a post backup script. For example, to to backup a MySQL database, you could use a pre and post backup script. The p the pre backup script would run um, MySQL dump and save the uh, the dump file somewhere on the on the local system and then you would have to configure the file set to actually back up that dump file and in the post backup script you would just uh, uh, delete the dump file right. I can so use, uh, pipe uh, as a storage yeah, the there's uh, yeah there's a there's a bpipe plugin which can actually pipe directly so you don't need the uh, the space for the um, dump file on yeah. the system but this is also possible with the python with the python with python plugins and the advantage is that we have we can add more logic to it so for example we can we all there is already a contributed uh, plugin to uh, for mysql backup mm -hmm. which actually first uh, queries which databases do we have and then it does a separate dump 
for every database, so for yeah. restore, and it directly pipes the data to the I've never storage done the uh, I have never did it the, with the dump way. Mm -hmm. I've always uh, shut the MySQL server down. We have ah, a back up the server beca yeah. uh, because we have a lot of lot of data. If that's possible, if you can uh, have a short downtime, uh, we or have if special, you use special snapshot. backup server for this. Okay, yeah, uh, we are. I think we will also um, support. Uh, I think there's a tool named Percona Extra Backup. Yeah. Yeah. I know it, uh, but I think it works only with Percona MySQL version. As far as I know, it uh, should I'm work sure. with uh, normal uh, MySQL also. So we we will probably add some uh, integration with that. Um. Okay, so here's the explanation of what actually happens when using um, Python plugins. Um, so first, if, as we um, have configured it in the file set, um, the Python F, the C code, which actually goes in Python FD.so, instantiates a new Python interpreter. It extends the Python search path with the path given in the module path. And then actually st starts the, the Python code. Then, no, it, it actually only starts the interpreter and then uh, different callbacks from the C code, the, Pyth the C code, the uh, Python FD.so, actually invokes methods in the, uh, in the Python code. And also, for the complete workflow, the Python code needs to call functions from the C code. This will be shown later. The, these callback functions uh, uh, from the C code um, must be used import barriers FD that actually makes available the C functions from the Python FD.so in the Python code. Uh, there are constants defines which should be used in the Python code. That's just a bunch of integers, but it would be very bad readable code if you directly would use the number, so it's better to use the constants that are defined. This file comes with the package. Um, you can also directly look at that file. Um, then it loads the load barrios plugin in the Python plugin code. Uh, next is to call the path plugin definition so we can process the options that have been given in the configuration. Um, yeah, and then a different processing loop depending if it's a command or option plugin will start. Um, yeah, now we get to the difference of. Uh, Command plugin and option plugin. So the uh, for the command plugin, the the uh, plugin definition string is uh, defined in the include section, while for the option plugin, it's defined in the options section. And here we have to define the set of files to be backed up with a normal file um, parameter. And that's also uh, one of the major differences between option plugins and uh, command plugins. The command plugin defines itself which files are being backed up while the uh, option plugin processes uh, which gets the files which are being backed up from the from the normal C code. So I think uh, mm -hmm. that's cool, and uh, because uh, in Bakua you need to uh, specify files or a uh, path for files mm -hmm. uh, for every job, and if you want to make it dynamic or something like that, 
uh, you need to use, for example, bash command. Yeah, that's also possible. And yeah, like find and so on. Yeah. And you can use it now uh, in Veros with yeah, that's plugin. Yeah, that's with a uh, uh, command plugin. So. So this is how uh, the um, processing works uh, for a command plugin. Um, it's first the the Python function start backup file is called. A, a save packet variable is passed, and that must be filled in the Python code. This actually determines which file name Varios knows. Afterwards, um, then the, the plugin IO function actually does the real IO. That means it must either uh, read the data from a pipe or from a file. <coughs> and in the end, it must also close the file. The plugin IO function is called with different um, IO operation parameters. And finally, the end backup file function is called and this is also used to determine if more files are being backed up or not. So if it's, if more files are uh, being backed up, it must return this value and otherwise it must return this value to finish. Um, and this function is also, it's only called with option plugins, not with command plugins. Um, yeah, this is in contrast how a uh, command plugin does it. So, yeah, these are some uh, of the callback functions. So that is, those functions are actually uh, C functions that are called from within the Python code. Um, job message is uh, something that uh, you see in the end when you uh, say messages to see the, the output of the job or show job log, while debug messages are normally hidden if you don't uh, run the file daemon in foreground mode and set a, a debug level. And get value is used to get uh, variables from DFB, for example, um, the type of job, if it's a backup job or a restore job or something like that. Um, the a Python plugin can be monolithic, only one Py file but it's uh, usually better to have a to have a, a class-based approach to not reinvent the wheel all the time. So we have also added a, a base class which um, defines a lot of functionality already that can be used. Uh, you can inherit from that and um, over override uh, methods that should do something different. There are also some functions that are just stops that do nothing that must be over, over with. Yeah, this is how to um, output a debug message. This is very useful when um, writing a Python plugin to see at what point in the code is actually being run and to add debug output. Um, yeah, this is how to run the um, file daemon in foreground with debug level, so otherwise you don't see any debug message. Um, yeah, job message in contrast is sent to the director, so it's uh, visible in the job output.
and for return codes, the, the constants should be used. Yeah, this, the uh, Barrios local file set plugin is a, is a, yeah, this is, I think, one way to, uh, in, the, in the classical way to define, uh, and this can also actually be changed to run a script to define the set of files to be backed up without using plugins. Like it can read the set of uh, files from a file like this. In this uh, plugin, we we pass. Uh, it's 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 not very useful. It does not much more than back up a set of files, but it's it's a good example to to get started with developing your own uh, plugin. So we just pass uh, a parameter that is supposed to have a list of files that are being backed up by the Python plugin. This is actually the file that gets started by the Python fd.so and it uses, it instantiates the, the class here at this point and defines functions that are uh, called in the, in the Python class, which is this one and anything else is done there. The method pass plugin definition is always called uh, at the beginning. It must pass the, the options that are defined. Yeah, this basically explains how the how this uh, sample plugin works. I think. What kind of man? Are you bored already, or? No, no, no. I'm just looking for something. And the plugin IO <laughs> function finally handles the real read write operations. For restore also the Python code must uh, take care to create intermediate directories. Yeah, there is as I said already, a uh, contributed MySQL plugin in, written in Python. So it first runs show databases to get the list of databases and then dumps uh, each database in a separate dump file and that's directly piped to Barrios. So no, no temporary disk space. These are the options of this plugin. Uh, for restore, this is still does. Uh, this it's not yet possible to directly pipe the data back into MySQL. It just restores the the dump file, and then this dump file must be manually. And what's the reason? It it's just uh, maybe a lack of time. The person who contributed yeah. it. Uh, wanted it like this, so this is a possible enhancement for this, for this plugin, because uh, in that case, um, you may not want to restore it in the same database as before, mm. but into yeah. another database. Uh, so. I suppose it works mm. similar in Bakula. Uh, I've uh, never tried uh, mm. pipe as a storage or a storage device, uh, but you probably may know, uh, if I uh, use some uh, job which has a storage device pipe and I do a backup so it 
for example, mice go dump and then mm -hmm. we'll be passed to storage them onto pipe and save it into uh, volume. And when I do restore, what I get? Do I get the file? Uh, you are using the bpipe plugin? Mm, no, I think uh, there's no plugin. It, it, it's directly in Bakula or not. Uh, I think there's something like that. Uh, is it a SD, uh, storage daemon option? Yeah, to storage daemon option and I think there's a pipe as a storage device. I've never used that, no. I mean, you should really get, let the. Uh, Actually, you asked some questions. I don't think yeah. That I have, I have never heard. Yeah. A pipe option in the. Questions. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. No, there's uh, actually there's B pipe. So B pipe you can use. B pipe is a B FD plugin. Yes. Yeah. To um, to uh, to uh, write directly into a volume and or to read directly from volume. But what you can also do is you can um, describe some um, P4 devices and yeah, you have the possibility. Yeah, I, I, I meant P4. Yeah, yeah but I'm P4 sorry. it's not really for persistent. But what you can also do, there's something like a raw block writing mode for, uh, for, for devices in the storage team and so on. So raw, uh, raw. I don't know exactly. Ah, so wait, I will take a look. So, so you end up with a, you end up with a dumped file as a readable as with all the SQL statements in it uh, on the SE side or yeah. that. So and, uh, when I do a uh, restore of, the, of this job, mm -hmm. so uh, it will uh, it will do what? It will create uh, it will create a file in the end. Yeah, with this plugin, yes, yeah. it will create just a file with, uh, uh, yeah. which is the output of MySQL dump. And then you must use the MySQL command to actually restore it into the database. Yeah, director API, I think we don't uh, cover it a lot here. It's like a Python way to use instead of B console. We have added uh, a socket option, and which is also used uh, by the uh, Barrios web UI. And uh, this is possible to use also from Python code with this module. Yeah, uh, and it's uh, interactive console, or uh, no? It's meant to be for for scripting stuff. Yeah, yeah. So I it's a little bit better than B console because actually I it's not an. Um, if you if you would like to improve it, you can, but actually there's no uh, no interactive. You mean the interactive B console in Python implemented? So it's, it's more for doing requests. You know, to set up a B console, uh, B console commands with with this Python API. Yeah. So that's it's it's a direct connection to the director. Yeah. You know, like like the B console in Nash. It's B console actually also the B console binary connects via TCP to the director, and but this can be done from Python also to do it in a programmatical way. Maybe there is some 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 improvement which is very interested. So you can you can switch also via the API. You can be able we to have switch the API mode, yeah. Yeah, we have added a, a JSON API mode so mm. that the commands uh, usually, uh, e-console commands output uh, text data. Um, but the API mode uh, JSON then returns uh, JSON data. So it's, it's possible cool. to process it in a, a proper way in by programming. An example use case for this is a, a fuse driver, which can be then you can use uh, make a fuse mount and browse the set of data that's being backed up in 
in a normal way. It's kind of improved BVFS. Yeah, B BVFS. It's it could be also used to BVFS just a console command. Yeah. So and this also has Python no, output now. So. Yeah, I think we skip this. Yeah, we actually will, will probably start soon to, there's a, a backup restore API for overt and so also for our web. Um, I would like also, there are also many people who just run uh, plain KVM, which may also want to do agentless uh, backups. We don't yet have something for IMAP, Cyrus IMAP. And is it possible to, uh, for example, uh, have a Python script which mm -hmm. will uh, communicate with the director and do, uh, for example, a one time backup without? Uh, uh, file daemon client installed on the machine? No, you, uh, you no. if you want to, to, to back up data from a client, you need to find... Yeah. I mean, if you have, if you have a, a plain a KVM, you could already... I mean, you must, to have a consistent backup, you must uh, shut down or suspend the virtual machine so you, it not, uh, no data is being written to the actual uh, image file and then you could uh, just pack it, up, pack it up in a normal way but to have a live backup of running virtual machines some snapshot technology must be used which is provided by the overt backup restore API but not by plain KVM it's uh, there's recently in the latest uh, QMO uh, some feature has been introduced to um, do uh, incremental backups with plain QMO KVM. Maybe it will be possible if you uh, use LVM as a, as That's a, possible. As a device can, backend can, for, uh, for the machine and, uh, and you can make a, a, make a suspe snapshot. suspended uh, or make yeah. a snapshot. Yeah. It's often, it depends if you run the database on it, it will probably need yeah, to really have Of course, it depends on yeah. what's running on the machine. Yeah. Or just make a make a database consistent with some yeah. flash or something like that, and that do the LVM snapshot and. Yeah, then there's all the Docker stuff now, which uh, I often ask myself what must be back up there, but as it's now also uh, being started with uh, pet containers. Usually a Docker. Uh, container would no, ha have no uh, persistent data, but rather use uh, Ceph or Gluster for its persistent data. So, Yeah, this is the new incremental backup feature in QEMO that uh, um, probably interesting, would be interesting to write a backup for, uh, plugin for this. Um, Yeah, and finally all the, some links. Website, yeah, but, um, we have also done a lot of work on the documentation. This is based on the uh, documentation, which was forked, but it's, it was enhanced a lot. Um, we have packages for Fedora, CentOS, RHEL, Debian, Ubuntu LTS, and Windows. And we have a bug tracker. Um, every, everything is uh, open source. We are committed to open source. And uh, yeah, for sure, there's a company behind this. And uh, we more or less do the same business model as Red Hat, offering uh, subscriptions and support. And do you have any idea how uh, many installations of barrels are 
in the world. <laughs> no, no, not really. We don't count them, so yes. we have um, we reach the mark of 10,000 unique clicks a day. So I yeah, th there are um, lots of downloads already. So, so um, also. Um, so far, we have. Yeah, it's getting more and more popular. Mm. So, yeah, we, we can track them. Um, not everyone who uses it uh, runs into our doors and says, hey, yeah, we want to buy support and subscription. So, um, actually, what, what we can say is that we have um, some big universities on our side which are using it. So, actually, the biggest environment um, I'm responsible for is up to 2.5 petabytes. So, it's, it's a highly mixed environment. <laughs> Um, Daniel, Daniel does all the real work. He goes to the yeah. customers and... Uh, and actually there are also some government agencies in the United States and in Germany mm -hmm. as well, which are using it in Luxembourg. So, and there are also small companies, middle-sized companies, which are using it. Um, so, actually, I think so you will find quite a lot of places where you have to prom promise to uh, to to um, to store your data on an LTO tape and to to bring it in a in a bank vault. And then, if you know such companies, you can ask them. So, what you use, and maybe they say Bacula, but Rails maybe no more, um, or something proprietary. So, mm -hmm. I think there are qu quite a lot more than we know actually. So. Um, or you also can see that in traffic, and I can see that also in my work. So how many subscriptions do, do you have? How oh, many subscriptions? I don't know if I can talk about it. <laughs> or okay. it's about to be enough to survive. So if you, if, you, if you ask in that place, so what I can say or is. Dance or so hundreds. if you. If you um, it's, I think it's you, below 100. If you uh, want to feed back about the last three years, uh, quite, some quite big I ones. can say that the last year um, there was a significant impact the, the um, subscription um, requests um, yeah, increase you know, yeah, definitely. in a very fast way. Mm -hmm. um, normally I'm doing other Linux consulting stuff too. Last year I'm only doing this, doing mm -hmm. my trainings, doing my consulting I was at Red Hat side too. Oh. Red, Red Hat use it. The PT, PTM. Yeah, for the PMP. Yeah. yeah, say it please. <laughs> Please he is, he's done the training. They're yeah. using it. I trained them. So I was here in December. In the yeah, I believe so. Yeah, yeah. I think that this was before. Two months ago. Huh? So last year on the site. Yeah, we are also a, a Red Hat uh, technology partner with Boreo. Yeah. So. And actually, so also the biggest tape library um, I had on the customer side is up to 600 slots, uh, eight drives, and whew, you know, and um, there are a lot of installations out there, I think, and a lot of people actually, especially last year, are my training. So, um, so fifty percent of the people in my trainings were Bacular, uh, Bacular users because I'm also doing the Bacular training. You know, that's called various Bacular training. But each of the participants say after the whole week training, so next week we will change. Yeah, you know? I understand so that uh, most of your current customers or users are uh, Bacula uh, uh, users before because yeah, but, uh, but what is yeah. compatible. I say yeah, and what, what I say they, I com but after that week, it was not really hard work to convince them. You know, so not only also we also have we works. also have customers who. Uh, who have used uh, Tivoli? Yeah, in, no, in Tivoli not so because much. Because they also want to save uh, uh, licensing. Yes, uh, but that's what's low, Lower the licensing costs. Um. The most, the most installations uh, with which are changed from proprietary vendor vendors to barriers last year uh, or the last two years uh, were mainly uh, HP Data Protector, mm. uh, and so. Um, also in the in the peace world, we have um, a lot of progress in it. Yes, so we also work a lot of it. development yeah. found development too from big sites. Um, it's working now with the virus to and all the stuff you need and you know you can it, use it. It works with uh, NetApp and what was NetApp and Isilon, for example. Yeah. We already proved so 
Uh, but what I also want to say, it's definitely thing we have the package is also for Windows. So, and that's what I forgot to say if you are asking me for the differences. So, if you want new and functionality, 100% functionality, Vacula packages for your, for your environment, you have to call Vacula systems and you have to pay once. No. Because, so that's recorded, no? no? Because uh, they say it's hard, it's hard to create them. And so on and so on. And we have them for free, for everyone. In each series, you know? And yep, as I can say, it was once, once a time it was hard work, but now our OBS, open source software, builds the Windows packages automatically. Yes. E in each release, so that's also a big difference. There, uh, uh, the the major releases are uh, published so for free on downloadwarriors.org, but uh, the bug fixes, the, the source code always goes to GitHub, but uh, updated packages uh, will be made available for subscription customers only. You know, uh, so people are asking also, my, if I'm in the technical presets, people ask me, oh, how many people are you? So, okay, they compare it, oh, continuously development, and there's no, no, there's no, there's no site branch, which proprietary parts and so on, and there's all in one single branch, you know, and that's what, that, that what makes the impact to most yeah, we have a quite, we are, we are open for, uh, and we also get more and more uh, contributors. And uh, so it grows. Mm. It's cool. And what we do? I think we will expand this year too, and in That's a very right. good way. So yeah. is it uh, the same with BarOS as with uh, Bakula if you want to do parallel backups uh, because in Bakula you can't use uh, for example we have some uh, some RAID device or uh, something like that that uh, we put backups and then we uh, uh, since then to S3 uh, storage uh, and we can't use uh, one uh, storage device for multiple jobs running par in parallel. You, you have to uh, create some links and uh, do do some magic about uh, do some magic with it because uh, storage dean can uh, write to uh, storage device uh, only for one job. That's because uh, mm. they design. Mm, uh, no, 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 not 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 exactly. So. Um, um, you can run par jobs parallel, so up how many you want, uh, yes. but you, you can only read or write if you use a device. The device can only read or write, but if you write, you can, you can run how many jobs as you want, but it, sh it, should, it should be make sense and it should, it should need to be scalable and um, it should be a uh, fit into your perform envi environment, your performance, you know. And you can also run parallel jobs to tape. But if you are talking about tape, tape technology, it makes no sense to write directly on tape multiple jobs at one time. Because no, then no. you have to slice it on tape like yeah, that. Yeah, you, you normally use uh, spooling. Uh, we don't have tape, so ah, okay. only this. We have, we have only, uh, yeah. so, okay, then it's a matter of. So that's what I'm saying a lot of time. Then it's a matter of what kind of data you are like to back up, and how big is the data, how big are the data sets, and then there's an impact in how much uh, gigabyte you write into the volume, how you size the volumes, <coughs> how many volumes you use, how you spread your um, data um, about the volumes. And then you can find the right way to parallelize your jobs. And for example, if you are writing um, to this, you can also do smoothing. Before you write yeah. to this, we have an extra rate. It depends. Spooling. It depends if that makes sense. Be uh, so the problem is if you don't use uh, spooling, then uh, just like with tapes, the volume file 
gets written one chunk of job A, then one chunk of job B, then again one chunk of job A. So uh, you have the, the data mixed and spooling prevents it. It, it spools first and then the whole uh, stream goes to the file I and then the other. So Pardon? I think we use pooling. Yeah. That, uh, the volume belongs only to uh, this particular job. Yeah, but the problem is for sure if you use no, if you have a single if you have a single server installation which runs director and SD on the same machine, then you somehow you by using spooling you double the I/O operations, which does not always make sense uh, uh, for performance. And it's a reason why you need two different RAID arrays or disk mm -hmm. Don't you? Or you use you probably want to use a SSD for the spooling because then it, it must be it should be a different disk because oh, otherwise okay. uh, it it gets unnecessary too much you double the I/O actually by by spooling if it's all on the on the same machine or on the same disk that can uh, cause performance problems for sure but actually you can define maximum concurrent jobs in the in the storage daemon configuration. Yeah, but I, I still think there's mm. there's some possible yeah. so so easy. Uh, yeah, I also yeah. remember that we but also we there, we uh, there's uh, I read some uh, article about it a uh, few months ago, but uh, still I still haven't yeah, there are some configurations yeah. which define uh, uh, many uh, storages in the storage daemon which point to the same directory or something yeah, yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I have I think there was we have every year we organize an open source backup conference in Cologne and uh, I remember there was a talk uh, of somebody who also uh, presented that type of configuration to address some issues. So yeah. Um, what, yeah, what, you, what you mean is also, yeah, you can, um, um, first you can say you have also the, this whole disk changer comp stuff which we also ship, but what you can also do is you can create, I, I, I don't like, uh, I, I find my own word, but you can do something like in, like in um, fake tape changer, you know? You, divide, you define an out changer in your, in your storage team side, which can use multiple devices, and then you configure the devices, and all the devices are shown to the same path. But there actually there are some limitations in the storage team and director logic, um, which, uh, makes it necessary to control the, um, the striping uh, about the different drives. Um, yeah, that's a, that's a hard um, inheritance of... Uh, multiple pools at the same time, you know? There yeah. are some issues if you have a tape library with uh, more than four drives and, uh, and sometimes it's... And then... Um, if you've the communication you've between SD and director is... is yeah. For, for example, I think uh, it would be uh, hard to use uh, more pools for one job uh, because uh, uh, it will. I, th I think it will. It, uh, it will increase uh, number of volumes too. Maybe a of course. Bit. And uh, for example, we back up uh, servers with uh, I don't know seven hundred fifty gigabytes. And oh. we do have to do full backup every time because uh, all all the files are changed every time, and they are uh, uh, they are binary. So y you can do oh, that's f for example those no. those MariaDB servers. Yeah, uh, hmm? uh, we can we can do a dump because dump uh, it would, with dump it will take for example two days to dump it. Okay. But if we shut the MySQL server down and read some the raw data, raw, uh, sh uh, read the directory, or yeah. you know what I mean, uh, not dump, but read the file system. Yeah. Uh, it's really faster, but it mm -hmm. still take a few hours. Yeah. I see. Okay. Yeah. Uh, as far as I heard, the the Percona extra backup thing is. It's, it's, I think it's supported to use it on uh, normal MySQL servers and it enables some way uh, incremental backups also. And we, uh, we use uh, DocuDB as a storage engine. 
What? Tukudibi. I have never heard that. Uh, it's like, you know, DB, but uh, ah, okay. it's mm-hmm. from Tuktek and yeah. Karakona uh, bought it for, uh, with Tuktek, ah, okay. I, I don't know, about a year ago. So and how does it organize? I mean, uh, you know, DB is some very big files, few uh, very big files. Yeah, yeah. and this is uh, one big file for every, uh, for every table. And few, okay, so it's few, let's s- few smaller mm-hmm. files with some metadata. Yeah, but however, it's and use if this the database is active, the big files always. The problem is that we, we don't have a, a so called a Delta plugin. So this is something we have also some uh, some thesis pr- proposals, uh, and this is one of the proposals for for a thesis work. So because hopefully, we sometimes we want to get a a brilliant student who, who works on this, it would be very cool for this uh, use case because it's usually, I, I mean, you, have, you usually on, the, on these big uh, files from the database, only a small percentage is actually changed. Of and course. So it would be very good to have a, um, a plugin which only backups the delta of those files that has yeah. changed. Yeah. Are there any proposals? Yeah, we have some 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 thesis proposals on the no 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 on the website. I have the are there any commitments actually? No no no. But I wanted to have this on the slides because yeah. we maybe no. there are many students here that may be interested in maybe. We have also considered to um, participate in Google Summer of Code, and that's a lot of uh, as a as a as a. Uh, so you are as, um, as a, oh, how is it called, the mentoring that has to be done, it's uh, organizational, yeah. a lot of stuff, so I don't know if you have sufficient resources for that, but we have considered that it's quite interesting. Uh, how often do you uh, have a new release? That depends more or less uh, on, on features, of course. But yeah. uh, I s- assume it's not two years or so. Like twice a year, one. major release. Twice a year, less. major release. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. So there's usually a feature freeze, freeze phase, and then things must be stabilized, and then there is a cut. The next one. Yeah. yeah. Any other questions? Maybe at least what's official that you asked for the references. So we are on the oh, how was it called? The French government makes an um, an proposal list for open source software every year. Away, I will give you the exact name. Mean, we are listed there with uh, 150 other open source softwares, and we are ma- we are uh, recommended there. French government, so they have a um, reference list. It called Soli. I, I can't speak French, so yeah. still Soul Intermi. The uh, I don't know. Uh, okay, thank you. And we are here on the list. Actually, it's in the backup software games at the end. Of here. Backup PC and various, you know? Yeah. Oh, nice. Mm-hmm. So, that's official announced by the French government. Because the French government has actually some uh, um, progressive programs to, uh, to, to push off source in the departments. And, yeah. We are also collaborating with uh, some Gluster developers because there's uh, something uh, new in Gluster. In Gluster FS, you usually have you may have a huge amount of, of files, and internally Gluster knows which files which files have been changed, deleted, uh, added, and so there's the uh, I think in 3.7 there came the Gluster find feature in. And uh, I don't know if you, you know the accurate backup mode, which also normally the normal incremental mode 
considers the, the timestamp and doesn't see if a file was deleted or not. The accurate mode does see that because it does a whole traversal and then compares it with a um, previous backup. So we have, uh, yeah, working on the integration with the cluster find feature. So uh, even if there are lots of large, very large number of files in a, in a cluster FS, we can do proper um, incremental backups without. It would take a lot of time to traverse. Normally, it would be necessary to walk all the the files that are there, and um, that would be not very practical. Yeah, then I uh, think we are done. Uh, are there any uh, changes in, uh, or uh, are there edits, edit on a uh, compression algorithms in yeah. Barrows? Yes, yeah. we have um, a, um, LZ, LZ4. a few more LZ4. Yeah. Um, wait, I don't want to lie, I don't know that. Um, we have LC4, LC4 HC. So far, yes, and I'll see it fast. So we expand. Yeah. That's cool. So we will build new new backup solution and hopefully we will go away from Bakula. Good. If you need any help or you have questions, give me a call or if you want training. Also or just uh, join the mailing list and yeah, or use the mailing list or and if you please if you find bugs submit them of course but read the bug reporting guides but read, before. Yeah, read bug reporting guides yeah. sometimes there are people that just uh, that's actually add a, a bug report and say, this doesn't work <laughs> that's very useless so try to make a good bug report that's more useful. Yeah, thank you very yeah. much for your presentation. Time. <laughs> yeah, thank you it was a bit Sorry? not very crowded, so yeah. but anyway, it goes through the website. Days,
want to just think it back. Yeah, yeah. Get lost. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Da äh, keine Ahnung. Was gibt es noch jetzt? Ich glaube, irgendwas Interessantes gab es noch. Ja, ich gehe in Cluster als Automated Volume Management. Oh ja, gehe ich mit. Das ist neu. Wo ist das jetzt? Ja, in E105. Das hier? Nein, E105. So, e ist ah. See you tonight? Well, actually, I'm not coming because I'm running a different class for tonight. Okay. So, more, more than one year planning for it, so unfortunately not. Okay. Maybe next time, hopefully it's fine. But I'm quite sure that we will organize one more thing because that was pretty in our team. Hmm? The guys were kind of very surprised and very happy, probably, I would say. You want more train? Well, I'm quite sure about it. Because you guys and other people are interested as well. So mm -hmm. I'm quite sure that they will ask. Do you want give me a call? Yeah. Let's set it up. Great. Cool. Sounds good. Yeah. Then I'm here. Maybe in the future. Yeah. Faster than I saw. <laughs> cool. Yeah, sounds nice so. Yeah, cool. Sounds really cool. Great. That means you plan to use it with heavily. Cool. Nice. And then. And they're doing a good work last time. Yeah. Great. Great, great. Yeah, then? Then okay. see us. Oh, the next day, yeah. enjoy your day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because Thanks. I think tomorrow morning I have to leave early, so that means next time when I'm here, we see us. Okay. Or oh, if you change yeah. your plans, maybe. Hello, guys. Hello, guys. See you guys. See you guys.